politicians and policymakers on security all over the world are meeting at the 2018 Munich Security Conference. This meeting has been going on since 1963, and heads of state and government will be under one roof in Germany discussing the world security situation. Ahead of that, political correspondent with our partners, DW Thomas Sparrow, joins me from Berlin. We'll also talk about uh, general political situation in Germany, but let's start with security. Thomas, it's good to have you once again. Now, what's key on the agenda for this year, and why is it so important? Well, the organizers, uh, JT, have stressed that in the past year, the world has been probably too close to uh, conflict, if you think, for example, about the situation between North Korea and the United States, if you think about how uh, the situation has developed in uh, Syria, if you think about the situation in Ukraine. And they also say that all these uh, international conflicts have developed against the backdrop of increasing <coughs> nationalism in many parts of the world. And those are areas, those are topics that the different world leaders will be discussing in the next few days uh, in Munich. We will certainly be there covering uh, all the developments uh, from Munich and trying to also understand what key proposals uh, the politicians and policymakers will be presenting to try and solve some of these very important and also very difficult international problems. In view of this, Thomas, what's in it for Africa? Well, Africa is certainly present in uh, these discussions. Obviously, you and I have spoken on many occasions about the issue of migration, especially mm -hmm. migration to Europe, but the organizers have also stressed that migration within African uh, countries, within the African continent, is also particularly important, and that that is not only the only issue that they want to discuss about Africa. We're talking also about uh, specific conflicts in countries, I don't know, with uh, uh, Boko Haram, for example, or Al-Shabaab, uh, things like that will also be uh, discussed and how that can affect the region as a whole. And also food insecurity is an issue that organizers are uh, putting particular focus on and which countries or which areas in Africa could be affected, for example, by famine. Mm. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get in touch with you on Friday when the actual program begins and so we can get some updates there. But Let's turn our attention away from uh, the security conference to what's happening in Germany. We understand that there's been another political bombshell when everybody else thought that Germany has finally reached a point where they finally get a, a permanent government. Indeed. In fact, uh, this conference in Munich has been to a certain extent overshadowed by this new chapter in Germany's political drama. Last week, uh, you and I spoke here about this coalition mm -hmm. deal that according to many could put an end to months of uncertainty in Germany. But only two days later, one of the key political figures who negotiated that deal, and we're talking here about Martin Schulz, the head of the Social Democrats, uh, said he did not want to become foreign minister any longer. And only yesterday he announced that he would be stepping down as head of his party with immediate effect. That all uh, happened because of internal pressure, because members of the Social Democrats believed that debate about personnel, about who would do what uh, in the new coalition had overshadowed what they believed is important, namely the discussion about content, and in particular, the discussion about that all-important vote that the entire membership of the Social Democrats will be uh, conducting in the next few days, in the next few weeks, at the beginning of, of March, in order to approve or reject that coalition deal. And all this internal pressure within the Social Democrats uh, led to, uh, to the remarkable fall of Martin Schulz as the head of the party. Mm. Are there any lingering reasons why he's lost his popularity so quickly within the party? Well, just think, it's absolutely a remarkable fall. Only one year ago, Martin Schulz had been elected as party leader by 100% of the votes of the delegates. However, since then, uh, he lost three regional elections. He got a very bad result at the federal election back in September. Uh, he then negotiated uh, the deal, but afterwards he not only had to leave the party leadership, but also his intention of becoming foreign minister here in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And to a large extent, it all revolved around these internal debates that we've been discussing. The Social Democrats are deeply divided about what direction the party should take, whereas the leadership believes that uh, the party has a responsibility also to govern in Germany 
and therefore favors this new grand coalition, many of the members of the Social Democrats, the rank and file, are deeply against this because they believe that the party can only renew itself if they do so outside of government, namely in opposition. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which was actually the initial announcement that he made. But this is certainly going down in uh, German political history. As we speak, Thomas, what are the options available to Germany as you decide on who to become, uh, uh, who to form the government? And what are, have the reactions been to this so far? Well, the coalition deal still stands, and that's important to stress. So okay. the only hurdle, or big hurdle, if you will, that uh, German politi politicians still have ahead of them is this vote by the entire membership of the Social Democratic Party, and we're talking here of 463,000 members. So from that perspective, the coalition deal, with its goals and with its policies on Europe or with policies here in Germany, is still in place. But it obviously shows how shaky the relationship between the Social Democrats and the Conservatives is when not only the Social Democrats face internal criticism, but also the Conservatives and in particular Angela Merkel faces also internal criticism. Many within her party have been criticizing the agreement because they are particularly worried about the fact that the Conservatives had to give the all-important finance ministry to the Social Democrats. So this just shows how difficult this coalition has started, how difficult the situation is for both Conservatives and Social Democrats. And to a large extent, you see, it also increases once again that uncertainty that has been the common thing here in Germany since the election back in September. Let's not forget, Germany has been nearly five months without a new stable government. Mm. And speaking of which, when we bring it to Ghana, when we try to bring the story back home to Ghana, we try to look at the foreign, um, foreign policy implications that it will have for a potential uh, foreign policy implications for countries like Ghana, for example, with this uncertain and shaky relationship within the government. Does that affect Germany's foreign policy towards countries like Ghana or countries in Africa? Well, it does affect Germany's standing internationally because obviously Germany's partners, not only in Europe but also around the world, are looking very carefully at what is happening in Germany and they're also looking with concern about the fact that this is a shaky relationship between partners, uh, that the Grand Coalition still faces that hurdle that we've been discussing, that Germany has been for months without a new stable government. But if you look at the Grand Coalition deal, if you look at the content of it, you can expect more continuity than radical change because it's also important to stress that the members of the Grand Coalition, the Social Democrats and the Conservatives, know each other very well. In fact, Angela Merkel has governed with the Social Democrats for eight out of her 12 years as German Chancellor. So from that perspective, you can still expect more continuity than radical change and clear international policies, not only towards Europe, but towards other partners, uh, partners around the world. Including Africa. Thomas, thank you very much for that update. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you once again uh, during the week for the Munich conference to see what's happening, what are they talking about concerning Boko Haram, etc. Thomas Farrow is political correspondent with our partners DW in Berlin, Germany, bringing us up to speed on what's happening there. It's been a very interesting political journey for Germany, and we've been following that, you do know that. Just watching the polls, Sydney Gitsi Andro up here.